Can works of history be powerful enough to change the course of history? Powerful that it can inspire or perhaps incite, theoretically, a revolution or movement, or simply challenge the ruling ideas? Writing his first Philippine history textbook in the early 1960s, historian Teodoro Agoncillo wanted the Filipino student to think of himself as a free Filipino, not as a colonial. His 1960 book, The History of the Filipino People, was a radical departure from the rest of Philippine history textbooks available at that time. I discussed more of this in a research paper I presented last July 17 at the Young Scholars Conference on Philippine Studies in Japan. And the said conference is an academic gathering for Filipinologists based in Japan and the Philippines. The research paper I presented germinated sometime in 2018 before I left university for a two-year break. In those days, I was exposed to the works of Agoncillo and Renato Constantino. It sparked for growing interest in the history of nationalism and how local historians in the Philippines shaped our nation's history after the war. The post-war was a starting point in decolonizing history. And in those days, Philippine history remained subjugated in colonial scholarship. The Spaniards left us with the chronicles. The Americans, on the other hand, wrote our history from their perspective. Those textbooks in the 1940s and the 1950s are works and studies that were written from the colonizer's point of view. Works by a Filipino somehow lack a framework or proper historical viewpoint. So in my paper, I explored the works of Agoncillo from the inception of his famous yet controversial Revolt of the Masses in 1956, then I moved further to how he started the history of the Filipino people. My revisiting of Agoncillo was influenced by my professor at Santo Tomas, Antonio Hila. Then around 2019, I found the works of Reinaldo Ileto on the Revolt and Von Totanes on the history of the Filipino people. From there, I expanded my research to include the two of Agoncillo's contemporaries. Constantino and the Jesuit father Horacio de la Costa. Perhaps you ask why I included Father de la Costa. This was also brought up during the QA. The answer is simple, but generates further complex ideas. First, de la Costa and Agoncillo, as Ileto suggests, have similarities. Second, de la Costa prescribed the idea of the unfinished revolution. And third, there was a development on the ideas of de la Costa related to nationalism beginning in his Harvard days until his London lecture in 1971. In the said paper, I theorized that post-war intellectuals and nationalist academics saw this director breakthrough as germinal to reshape the concept of the Filipino and its identity, which has been under colonial-oriented historiography and historicism. The aim of my paper is perhaps no longer new, but I attempt to offer new interpretation by exploring the common denominators among these three historians against the backdrop of post-war imperialism, the growing national sentiment, and related to the global activism of the late 1960s. Thank you very much.